Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown Chicken man, see, chicken man is a is, is, is in our hood. He he, like you say, legendary man. Yeah. You know, it's chicken man, a legend, bro. You gotta let us know. If they tip and toes, they knows it. They want They like you gotta ask Polo who is chicken man. Man, Craig Frazier, Bogota. They were getting it from Bogota. They used to call that boy Bogota because they say he was getting his dope from Bogota. I'm in these concerts again. I'm gonna I'm sit in these floor seats. I'm, I'm going to the, the NFL games again. I, all the things that I've been done, I'm going to do it again because I know the way. I got the blueprint to this. So there's no way I could fold when I got the blueprint to stand on top. You know what I'm saying? You know, that name was given to me before this. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that, that, that name come with a, a numerous of things. You know what I'm saying? I never gave myself no name. You know, every, all my friends, they crown me. You know, the people crown real kings. Nobody, a king can't crown himself. You know what I'm saying? So all this, all this come through. You know, I'll share on my documentary where these things arrive from. You know, where I get these names in a future date. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do the documentary, the man, the myth, the legend is coming, you know? Back in the day, everybody wanna be like Chicken Man. Back in the day, everybody wanna be like Chicken Man. Back in the day, everybody wanna be like Chicken Man. Nigga, free Chicken Man, nigga. nigga. Blood it in, nigga. Free dude. Free down. Chicken Man, nigga. It's a new tactic in the war on drugs. We're trying to intimidate the sellers and the buyers. Street sales of crack, a potent form of cocaine, is rampant throughout Florida as well as other parts of the country. Hands on the wall. Do it now. Law officers have been arresting suspected crack dealers and their alleged clients. But undercover drug buys and drug raids have failed to shut down crack sales. Residents in neighborhoods taken over by drug dealers complain they are not safe. People the house been broken into, people been shot, people been robbed. The tactic of warning motorists has been tried in the small Florida town of Boynton Beach. Police there say it was effective. Now, in Fort Lauderdale, police not only issue warnings, but take license numbers and send letters to car owners advising them their vehicles have been driven through a known drug area. Some of the notices could end up in the hands of spouses, parents, or employers. The American Civil Liberties Union here in Florida calls the police action on 8th Avenue an unconstitutional invasion of privacy, a Big Brother act that they say is not a solution to the drug problem here. Dudes like Kodak Black, you know, Coley P, Choo Choo, Boston Richie, you know what I'm saying? I got MGT, you know what I'm saying? B100, Trilly, Ely, E, Lily, Polo Po, you know what I'm saying? You know, I get, I get off on that type of stuff. That stuff keep me motivated. And, you know, I got my real homeboys, they be 36, you know, I got a Gucci trap, them Zeus. You know, I got white boy. You know, I got stunt kid. You know, I got fresh money entertainment. You know, dudes like Lil Day. They boys keep my account full. So I, I don't have nothing really to worry about. A lot of big dogs would come out of the state of Florida in the 1980s and the 1990s and make a name for themselves in the drug game. In Miami, you had guys like Isaac Hicks, Convertible Burt. Bunky Brown, Ricky Browley. You could go on with really just the city of Miami. Then you have Henry Manns, who would be convicted in 1989 as Jacksonville's first crack kingpin. But in Pompano Beach, it was Craig Chicken Man Frazier. Yo, yo, what up, though? Shays Popular. Salute the almighty mob. We headed to the sunny state of Florida with it. Now, when you're talking about the crack era, though it would reach fever pitch in states like New York, California, Washington, D.C., Detroit, and a lot of cities really across the United States. But the state of Florida would have to be considered the headquarters or home base. I never really knew how prophetical Jay-Z was until years later. I listened back in my head to that line 
when crack was what these pills are. I was a real star. Now, though, I know a lot of people wasn't there for that era. And it's probably hard for some others to even think back to it. And just in case y'all think I'm just making this shit up, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, it would state that the increase in the use of crack cocaine would occur in the United States during the 1980s, saying that crack cocaine was popularized because of its affordability, as well as the immediate euphoric effect and its high profitability. And though it is widely speculated, with some people even saying that it was created in a lab in a campus of a university in Los Angeles, it is the Britannica's belief that crack cocaine first appeared in Miami, where Caribbean immigrants taught adolescents the technique of converting powdered cocaine into crack. Now, however it came apart, it would be a gateway to many hustlers as an avenue to fuel their pockets. And Craig Chicken Man Frazier is said to be one of those hustlers. Now, based on my research, Chicken Man's life in the streets would start early where, according to the Sun Sentinel, in the mid-1980s, he would be charged with homicide in relation to a fast food restaurant holdup that apparently had went wrong. The Sun Sentinel didn't go into detail about the victim or the location, but they did say that during the robbery, a woman happened to be shot and killed by an alleged accomplice of Craig Frazier. According to the attorney that represented him in the case, Craig Frazier wouldn't serve a full sentence for that crime, telling a Sun Sentinel that a judge sentenced him to a youthful offenders facility for four years as well as two years probation. Now, what was manslaughter charges in the 1980s would be escalated almost a decade or so later in mid-February of 1997 when, according to the Sun Sentinel, Craig Frazier would be involved with the murder of a 15-year-old by the name of Melbourne Mossy. They would claim that on February 13th, 1997, Massey, as well as two other juveniles, were breaking into a car in the Villas of Lauderdale apartment complex just after midnight when allegedly Craig Frazier would walk across the street from his apartment and open fire. Now, two of the juveniles would manage to escape unharmed, but Massey was not so fortunate. He would end up taking a fatal bullet to the head. Craig Frazier would be arrested and charged with second degree murder and he would be held in the Broward County Jail without bail as, according to the Sun Sentinel, witnesses would identify him as the shooter with the motive being unclear. Now, I'm not sure how with eyewitnesses, but a judge in that case would say that he didn't have enough evidence to charge him with first degree murder going on to give him a $50,000 bond. Now, sometimes just being a somebody in the hood is enough, but with all of that shit, that's enough to put the police on your ass. And that's exactly what happened, because while all of that was going on, the authorities was putting together an operation titled Chicken Feed, which was a joint operation between Pompano Beach Vice Detectives and FBI agents. During the operation, they would arrest a 37-year-old Haitian import and export company owner by the name of Yves Messadu, who, according to Pompano Beach Vice Detective Nate Osgood, would be Chicken Man's plug to the work, saying that Messadu would bring the coke in on his freighter from Haiti to the port of Miami, where allegedly Chicken Man and several of his associates would transport it to Pompano Beach, saying even further that they had the whole city locked down talking about how he would have a spot in the place called Carver Homes, as well as another spot known as the Ugly Corner near 17th Terrace and Hammondsville Road in the 2100 block of Northwest 9th Street, a spot known as The Hole. Now, facing a life sentence with all of those federal enhancements, I don't know how you could even say it's lucky when somebody gets sentenced to 30 years 
but Craig Chicken Man Frazier would go on to serve more than two decades. I want to say right around 25 years or so before he would again have the chance to smell free air. According to the Sun Sentinel, he got the name Chicken Man because his father once raised fighting Gamecocks. Now, I'm going to say I think he got it another way. Y'all make sure y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all definitely get in the comment box. Let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we need to tell, what we missed, what we got wrong. All of that, y'all tapping with me directly. Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Until the next time, y'all know the verdict. Shades popular. Salute the almighty mob.